Finity Design version 2.1 has a new tool, Vector Flood Field Tool. What you need to do is press the R on the keyboard to access it. Works best if you've got shapes that are overlapping. It doesn't have to be overlapping, but I'm going with some overlapping shapes here. They need to be selected, that's the key thing. The tool is slightly frustrating, I will have to admit, and that's going to be up front because I have found it seems to have a mind of its own. There's some functionality that seems to work sometimes, and then sometimes it doesn't. So here, insert mode. This one works fairly well. Even there, it seems to have a mind of its own. So let's just go for paste inside. That's, or insert inside. Select that, and then go and select the color. So I'm just gonna go with pink. And if I click there, I can just, that part, just this shape here, you can see it's highlighting, is filled. These are untouched. But you can also see over here, if I expand that out, you can see I got this curve and this curve. Now, sometimes it seems to just generate one curve, but sometimes it generates that as well. Very strange. But also I can go for, say that, they're both selected again, make certain they're both selected. And again, I can do the same with the other one. So let's just go for that one, select that green, and got that. This one, if I go for there, for pink, and again, you can see it expand out and you've got the curve again and that curve. So you can build up a number of curves. They're all curves that you can manipulate using the move tool. So at any point you can always select them. So go over here, select the move tool, and then just reposition them. They're all still placed inside those shapes. Though sometimes I've noticed it doesn't do that. It will just ignore it and not paste it inside and it will just place it in between, even though the mode is set to place in between. So let's get rid of those and create some stars. So I can just show it works with different shapes, not just circles. So I've got those. So both selected again. Again, press the R. Again, there's the tool, Vector Flood Fill Tool. And you can set it to this mode. So in between. So instead of pasting it inside, what it does, let's just go over and let's set the color to blue, say. No, you don't have to use solid colors. You can use gradients, so just go for a gradient. There's a whole range of gradients here, and just click there. And then you can see what happens. It splits the star into, obviously, this part here. You can see that curve there, split, as well as the star itself, as well as the outline. So it splits the fill and the outline when you use this mode. Now, sometimes it will place it right at the top. So you will get the curve appear at the top, <coughs> which is very odd. But it does seem to do that. Sometimes it also places it at the bottom as well. Which is very strange. So undo. So again, back to that star. So again, press R, make certain you've got that tool. There, selected. You've got all the options here. This is set. And again, select a different one. What you can also do is you can hover it over or drag so you can drag over and you can change the color for all of them. And again, as soon as you've done that, you can see what happens. It breaks it apart. You've got that stroke for that star and the, st the other star that's broken apart as well, as well as the fragments. Now, for some weird reason, you've got these objects that you can't see what they are. Don't know what they are, but they're there. So let's just select it and move around. You've got an invisible one. <laughs> I haven't seen that during the tutorials. I don't know why it's creating that. But anyway, it's creating something else as well. Very strange. This tool has got some odd features, I will have to say. Right. So undo all that. And let's just go back to another one. So again, rectangles this time. With rectangles, what you can do, again, make certain you've got them all selected. You can also, you'll notice if you press R, again, flood field tool there. You've got, if you've got using gradients over here, and I'm using gradients, not solid colors, key thing is gradients, you will notice you've got this, none, max, fit. So if I click there, if I click that one, very subtle differences. In some cases, when the shape, tick the shape, there will no be no difference at all. You've got circles, it might be different. So let's just go and select a different shape there, different gradient, and then go through your max fit, min fit, you can see it's slightly, very slight difference. But that's a feature that only disappears if you're using a gradient. Now you'll also notice there's a fill mode. 
Here's a fill mode. And this one is probably even more than any of the other tools. Slightly frustrating. So you click here, add on top. According to the documentation, the add on top should add to the fill in the appearance panel. Should. And in about 20% of the time, it seems to do that. I have actually created shapes where I've clicked on it using this R, and let's just go for a grain, and it will add here in the appearance. Sometimes it adds it here as an additional path. Sometimes you click it, and it will add it and then delete it. I'm not certain why, but it does do that. It's weird functionality. But the key thing to work with it, to use these options, this, opacity. This is slightly frustrating as well. So if you set that down to, say, 46%, and then click apply there. And you can see what happens. It's added the curve over here. Done nothing over here. Click there. It does it again. Click there. You can see it adds another curve. Click there. So it's adding on top using this. But according to the documentation, it should be adding it to the appearance, not here. So I'm not certain why that. And maybe I'm misunderstanding it. But that's the way, to me, it's perfectly reasonable that it adds it here. But according to the notes, it seems to suggest it adds it there. And I have been getting it, adding it into the appearance panel. So why sometimes it adds it here, I do not know. And sometimes you click here, and you can add it. And each time you add it, it will take it away. Very odd as well. Also, you've got here, smart refill. So if I click on that, now that will not add it because I'm using the same gradient. So I click another one. Now you'll notice here the opacity when I change from gradient to gradient doesn't always get set back to 100%. But sometimes during tutorial run-throughs, I've been finding it just gets put back to 100% each and every time. So it's very odd. So now you can see if I click there, it just gets rid of those other ones. Now it doesn't add multiple copies. If I go to plus again, click there again, now it doesn't do it. It's not adding again because I've gone for plus. Before, it was adding it multiple times. It's ignoring it. It's still got this functionality. And there's also a knockout option. So just go here and I just click there. And you've got the curve. And that just basically forces it to be that color. Sometimes. <laughs> it's, and they are, ooh, click that. And you see, you'll get some additional curves just by clicking that by accident. I didn't intend to do that. So I just click that one. And you get lots of curves there. I click plus again. No, it doesn't add it. Key thing again, pasty, 46%, not back to 100%. But it's it's odd. Hopefully, with 2.2, that bit of functionality will work consistently, but I have found no consistency with it at all. Okay. Let's get rid of these ones. And I probably could restart Affinity Designer and redo it. And I will get the appearance panel will work. It will put them in the appearance panel and not in the layers panel. Very strange. you got over here, if you press R again, make certain you've got R, you'll notice there's a set bitmap fill. Unfortunately, there's no set bitmap fill off feature. Would be nice. Also, it would be nice if there were some scaling options and a few other features like that. Also, a random color feature would be nice. So again, press with the R, set bitmap fill, click there, and select a bitmap. I've got obviously a PNG file, so select that, click open, and then you can click there. And again, you've got here, now I've got in between, so again, you can see the star, the curve, the star, you get the stroke broken away. And I can do the same with the other one. So click there, and again, it does the exact same. So you've got star, the curve, and the stroke again. But I've got this little bit here, so I can click there. Um, why that does that, I do not know. You just click this bit, click that, and then it puts it back to that. I uh, don't know. That makes no sense whatsoever. But you can use this bitmap fill. Though I don't know why you would use it, because personally, you can, of course, if you've applied a gradient, use the gradient tool with the design, and just then use the bitmap fill using the gradient tool. That is probably a better option. 
I'm not certain why they added this bitmap fill here because it does seem to have a mind of its own. Again, let's go for 100, less than 100%, so put it to 42%. You click there. And then it doesn't seem to do anything there either. No. But I wanted to point it out. I think this is a great tool. It's got a lot of great features, but I have to say it is the quirkiest of tools. And I've been using it for many, many hours and a few days now, obviously. Uh, it's just come out. And each and every time I use it, it seems to have a mind of its own. So again, I'm just going to create some there, just using the arrow keys, you can just duplicate that. And what you can do, you can then go over here again, select the R, and you can fill them. So I'm just going to go with the gradient, and I can just fill them very quickly. And you see what happens. You can just build up a very nice gradient like that, like that, very quickly, which I think is quite a powerful way of doing it, because what you can do then is go over here, select this, Move tool, and then you can select the individual shapes. So you can just drag them out. So you can create some very broken apart gradients. So there's a lot of great feature functionality that you can explore with this tool. And you can see you can create some very odd shapes as well. That's a nice feature. But it is odd. It doesn't seem to work consistently. And that's frustrating at times. It works well with type, so you can go to type, so let's create some type, so type, and I'm just going to obviously do that. Now, you can see here, the shapes are not overlapping, but if you go to R, so press R, now I'm going for gradient, and this is a nice way of just quickly adding gradient, so you can see gradient there, and just add that, click there, they can add them very quickly, it ignores... This feature seems to be ignored. I don't know why. So if I go back again, let's just undo that. So if I go for paste inside, so click that, and again, do exactly the same. Click all those. Oh, it's pasted inside the type instead of being on top. That's the logic of that one. Still very unusual. But what it does mean is you can then create some really great designs. And again, you can break this apart. So you can select that curve. You can drag that around. And now I've got this shape. Oh, this is the original type. Aha. So that's what it's doing. Okay. It's not filling the... Oh, well, that's weird. Oh, there it is. It's filled its paste inside. Oh, it's, that's unusual. Okay. I see what it's doing, I think. It has definitely got a mind of its own, but I think I, I think I now understand that bit. So you got that. Now, if that was individually, I can select that. And again, you've got this weird one that's been pasted inside, but it doesn't look like it here. Oh, I don't know. I will be doing another tutorial on this at some point later in, few, <laughs> later in time. It's a, just an odd tool. I, I think it's a great tool. I think it's an absolutely fascinating tool. But please put your comments. I would really be interested. Have you found any issues with it yourself? Because I have struggled with this tool. I find this tool, I think, is going to be an absolutely brilliant tool. But it works in such an odd way. Works in just doesn't seem to be consistent how it works with the functionality. Maybe it's just me. But I just can't seem to get actually to, you know, have it consistently working properly. Now, if I go and select these individual shapes, let's just gain, because it's, maybe if I break down the curve, so let's see if I can right-click, convert to curves, and then separate. Now, you can see, oh, you get lots and lots of, ah, oh, that's very confusing. Oh, I'm certain that's uh, another thing. Well, my apologies, this video tutorial has been slightly odd than usual. It's been one of those tools that I really wanted to explore, go through and show. And this is a first pass. I should call it a first pass video tutorial because it is one that I'm learning and I will be working on this tool until I can understand it. Hope you found it of interest. Anyway, bye.